Who's ever been to a second line before? Who's ever heard jazz music before? Well, let me tell you what influenced the second line, where those traditions came from. They came from a place that is called Congo Square. Congo Square is located in New Orleans, directly behind the St. Louis Cathedral. There are six blocks to Congo Square. And lots of things happened there over the years, from the very beginning of the city until now, that influence our culture, that make our culture, that's at the root of our culture. And let's talk about some of those things. New Orleans was founded by the French in 1718. And the first enslaved people were brought in mass in 1719, within a year. We know that in the Cold Noir, one of the provisions was that enslaved people had Sundays as a day of rest. People gathered in circles, and inside those circles were musicians as well as dancers. There was the opportunity for them to continue their practices that they knew from their homelands. And this was the, how they celebrated, how they were able to remember. After 1808, the domestic slave trade became very, very active. People had been brought from different locations, from Virginia, from Maryland, from Washington, D.C., from North Carolina. People had been exposed to all kinds of cultures, like German culture to Italian culture. There were a large number of people who were of Haitian descent. And we know that all of those came together in Congo Square. It was almost like a melting pot, almost like a, a diaspora within itself. And over time, those influences those musical practices merged and blended to indigenous practices. That, that means new musical forms. So after a while, we cannot say that it was African music. We cannot say that it was European music. We have to say it was something else, right? And that something else eventually became what we call jazz. They made instruments that modeled after the ones they knew in their homelands and played the music that they knew in their homelands. They used rhythmic patterns that they knew in their homelands. But they also played the music and music instruments that they, that they found in the places where they lived and encountered. So I'd like to show you some of the instruments that were played in Congo Square. And we know this from different sources, primary documents, accounts, we newspaper articles, interviews from the WPA period. This is a jawbone of a mule, a mule's jawbone. And we heard, I heard about it, I read about this rather, in several accounts. And this makes such an awesome sound. You can't duplicate this. In Africa, the gourd is used for so, so many purposes. And it's used as a, a jug, if you cut this off and, and you uh, let, get the seeds out. But it's also used as a sound chamber. So this instrument, which people call the kalimba or the imbira, you can hear it if you're very close to it. But if you place it into the gourd, the sound amplifies, magnifies it, rattles. And the rattles were very, very important uh, in the music that was played at Congo Square. So, of course, you shake them, and they were made different ways. This is another example of instruments that were used in Congo Square. So we have the reed made from bamboo. So the primary instrument was the drum. It laid the foundation for the music. And there were different sizes, different shapes, different styles of drums. So today, Congo Square is known around the world for the legacy of the enslaved Africans, their gatherings, their music, and their dance that they perpetuated there. And on Sunday afternoons, people of all ethnic backgrounds gather to drum and to dance and to express themselves. Come and visit Congo Square because it's a great place to learn about the history of the city and the contributions that enslaved Africans as well as free people of color, but just the African presence in general made to the cultural landscape of New Orleans. And that landscape influenced the country as well as the world.